Montague Terrace is a narrow, tree-dark street lined with brownstones. It is in Brooklyn Heights, one block removed from the promenade, a walkway above the Brooklyn Queens Expressway. Step onto the promenade, and there is the Manhattan skyline. There is the Brooklyn Bridge. I grew up in Midwood, the daughter of a New York City firefighter and a nurse. We live 20 minutes from the junction, where Flatbush and Notion Avenues meet. Brooklyn College is there. My high school guidance counselor suggested I apply. Hell no, I thought. <laughs> I am not going to college in the junction. Instead, I went to Marist College in the Hudson Valley. After school, I imagined I'd find a small town, verdant and vibrant, with company and solitude in equal measures. Yet for years, I lived on Long Island, working stultifying jobs, writing a novel on weekends. Then I read an article about writers flocking to Park Slope. <laughs> what an odd joke. <laughs> Moving to Brooklyn on purpose? <laughs> but it was true. It was a thing. The Brooklyn writer. I guess I'll go back, I thought, genuinely annoyed. <laughs> but by then, if I'd heard writers were moving to Narnia, I would have started knocking on the backs of wardrobes. <laughs> In 2005, after 12 years away, I took an apartment on 7 Montague Terrace, a 5-4 walk-up with a single window and no oven. Since I'd come back to write, not cook, it was perfect. <laughs> Friday and Saturday nights, I quit writing at 10 p.m. to visit Heights Books before its 11 o'clock closing. Cramped and lit like twilight, at the end of each aisle stood a stack of to-be-shelved books, some as high as my waist. Those of us browsing moved carefully around them. Book lovers turned nimble as dancers, breathing in the scents of dust and paper. Late one cloudy autumn afternoon, I went to the CVS on the corner of Love Lane, where Sarah Debevoise, a beauty with many suitors, had lived a century ago. I was nearly home when the downpour began, and I dashed beneath the scaffolding on the corner of Pierpont Street. A group came running off the promenade and sheltered with me. Italian, college age, drenched and laughing. They began to sing. The chorus rose into the storm, fierce as light. During my time on Montague Terrace, I ran every evening after work when I should have been at this reading or that one, out mingling with the borough's bustling literary community, forging the connections I'd returned to find. But, turns out, I didn't come back to Brooklyn to find my voice. It is my voice. I began my jog on the promenade. In every season, tourists stood at its iron gate, staring across the East River at Manhattan. Always, a few were pointing, their fingers twitching like a metronome as they tried to discern where the towers had stood. Sometimes, I considered stopping, taking their wrists, gently moving their arms left or right. There, they were there. Because if you know where to look, if you know how, you can see them still. But I kept going, down the length of the promenade, through Cadman Park, then under the overpass, up the stone stairs, and on to the Brooklyn Bridge. Winter evenings, I'd have it to myself. Men died during its construction. A woman, the widow of one of them, purportedly used it to leap to her death. In 1883, 12 people were crushed in a stampede caused by a rumor that it was about to collapse. And don't forget the living who fled the city on a blue and yellow Tuesday morning turned to ash. 
Is the bridge haunted? I don't know. This is what I know. If Brooklyn is the borrow of churches, then the bridge is its cathedral. The bridge is most beautiful at dusk. The bridge cannot save everyone. The bridge will always be the way home. <laughs>